Hey, good morning. Pastor Chris Ireland here, and welcome to the Full Side Chat. Um, I had told you, for those who are pastors, ministers, um, those who have been in church for a while, I'm going to do something that you rarely hear a pastor do. I'm going to do a study on the book of Hebrews. Um, it's not that we don't use Hebrews. I mean, there are some great verses in there. Hebrews chapter 11, you know, the faith hall of fame. But you really hear a study on Hebrews. And the reason is, is it's so complicated. Um, but I'm going to try to make it like uncomplicated. And it's taken a lot of uh, prep and research and will continue. So what I want to do today, and there's a reason why I want to do Hebrews. It's come up a couple times in some of my talks recently. And I think it's, um, I don't know, relevant for today. So, let me start with the background. That's what I want to give you today. What is Hebrews? It's the letter to the Hebrews. So, this was not to the Hebrews as in only Jews. This was written, and there's lots of evidences for this. That's what's partly made this a little bit hard. Is what do you gloss over? What do you go deep into? But Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, was written to the Christian congregations in Rome. So, most Christian congregations at this time had been in synagogues. They came out of the Jewish community. But they weren't only Jews who came to faith in Christ. There were a lot of, you call them God-fearers. Um, Gentiles who were worshiping God in these, worshiping Jesus, excuse me, in these uh, Jewish synagogues in Rome. Uh, more than likely, they had been around for about 30 years. So we're looking about 30 years after the death of Jesus. And they were struggling. There had been some persecution. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Diocle, or excuse me, uh, Claudius. Claudius was Roman emperor. Claudius had expelled some of the Jews and some of the Christians, um, some of the people in this community, shortly before this was written. The Christians who were left were mocked. They were uh, challenged. They were not really looked very highly upon in their, in their uh, neighborhoods, in their communities, where they shopped, where they bought and traded. See, something that I think you want to understand is this is the time when there were a lot of arguments about who Jesus was. Was he God? Was he God in the flesh? Was he fully human? Was he fully divine? Um, we didn't know. There was talk among the Gnostics and Epicureans about the nature of God, the hidden, hidden things of God, and there were rumors spread. One of which was uh, that Christians were cannibals. They sacrificed their children and ate them. This came from the ser after the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus talks about the bread of life, and it says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can have no part of me. Say something like that, rumors are going to start. Um, Christians were accused of being atheists of all things, because you would have statues and pictures to all the gods people worship, but Christians didn't have any pictures, we didn't have any statues, because we worship the living God, Jesus. So there was a lot of misinformation. Hate that term. There was a lot of false things being said about the community. Claudius expelled the Christians from Rome. You had these rumors, and they were kind of like not looked really highly upon. 
And this was before the great persecution from the Emperor Nero, when he would light the streets of Rome by burning Christians on crosses and poles. Horrible, horrible things. So not only were they dogged already, they were going to be really, really hurt. Who wrote this? We don't know. Bottom line is we don't know. Uh, we do know who didn't write it. It was not Paul. We've known that since probably the uh, second century, third century. What we do know is that it was someone who certainly knew Jewish scriptures, the Old Testament. We certainly know that he was a very well-educated man. We certainly know that he was a very dynamic preacher. And this is presented not so much as a letter, but it is actually a very um, typical uh, homily, sermon back in the day. He took scripture and he expounded on it. As we would say, he exegeted it. Um, to show that Jesus Christ was the Son of the living God, um, prophesied in the Old Testament and come to live amongst us, and who now was crucified and lives in heaven, advocating for us. Um, he talks about the persecutions people in the Old Testament suffered, and he encouraged us to stay strong, the, the, the audience, the, the, the Roman Christian community because people were discouraged, people were beat up, people were mocked, people were persecuted, and people are like, I'm leaving, I can't do this. And he's telling them to take faith because you will be rewarded. And you already are rewarded by life with God. And stand fast because it is gonna get a lot worse. And, uh, and that's really the beginning, or the background, I guess I should say, to Hebrews. So, one of the questions that comes up, and let me answer this right now, and I think I'm going to stop here because this is a background to Hebrews. Um, <clears throat> remember, the message is to discourage Christians who are about to leave the faith to stay strong that your faith is not misplaced, that God and Jesus are who they said they are, and uh, you're secure. But who did write this? So there does seem to be some best guesses for who wrote Hebrews, but we don't know. In all, all likelihood, we really don't know. Um, some people think it was Apollos. Some people think it was, well, it looks to be like an Alexandrian scholar, Alexandria, Egypt, from that cultural center. Some think it was Philo. Some think it was Priscilla. Um, I tend to think that maybe it was Apollos. And the reason why is because Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John described Apollos as a Jew from Alexandria. He was eloquent, which means he was educated. And, uh, and he was a pastor who received the gospel from eyewitnesses to the ministry. He was at home in the Greek synagogues, Rome, um, the Western Mediterranean. And he was close to Rome. So, uh, Martin Luther thought it was Apollos, and that's where I tend to land. But any argument you make, I can't disagree. Origen, from the Church Fathers, made a statement, and I love what it says. And this is kind of where I fall on who wrote Hebrews. He said, who wrote the epistle? God knows the truth. Whoever he was, we owe him respect for his rhetorical craftsmanship, admiration for the depth of his theological reflection, and gratitude for this enduring word of exhortation. So, um, I try not to give my opinion, 
This time it will because it's appropriate. But this is where we start with Hebrews. Um, so it is a typical structure, kind of, of a sermon that would be given in an ancient Hebrew synagogue in the Greek-speaking areas, Rome. And uh, it basically exhorts and encourages us. I know you're suffering. It's going to get worse. Stay strong. Next week, we'll dive in to the first four verses. Have a wonderful weekend. Getting a little cool here. Winter is starting to hit. So wherever you are, I hope it is a great, wonderful day. Remember tomorrow Sunday, go to church and uh, let your friends know. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, at FL Compass Church. Keep the questions coming, and I'll see you Wednesday.